from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. And welcome back here on theCUBE, the flagship broadcast of SiliconANGLE TV, where our colleague John Furrier likes to say, we extract the signal from the noise. That's what we're doing here at Dell EMC World 2017, live in Las Vegas, along with Keith Townsend. I'm John Walls, and we're joined now by Trey Layton, who is the SVP and CTO of the Converged Platforms and Software at Dell EMC. Hi Great. guys, how are you? Good to see you, thanks Great. for being with us. Well. First off, let's just talk about the show in general. Uh, bigger, better than ever. Uh, more attendees, a lot of, of, I'd say excitement, a lot of good vibe, I think. But from your side of the fence, what are you feeling so far? I could not be more excited about the combination of the companies coming under the umbrella of Dell Technologies because we're finally able to be a true infrastructure company that can address the entire breadth of challenges, problems, infrastructure needs that customers have. And I'm a geek at heart and I love the client side of things. And then we've been doing rough and tough, hardcore data center stuff for a long time. And a lot of the things that we're building are having the client in mind and different overarching transformation technology, uh, uh, strategies. And so uh, I'm excited about what we can do from an enterprise side. I'm really excited about tying that into the client side, I think, as well. Yeah, you, you said breadth, and, and that you think about all the, the items you got in your toolbox these days. Uh, I mean, there is not one slice of the pie that you can't cover. You know, it, it is very true, and I love the strategy that we have as a company that, you know, VMware is a part of the family, and uh, virtualization is a very competitive landscape. There's other software stacks out there. There's a partnership with Microsoft. There's a partnership with Red Hat. So um, we're able to be a very agile company and have broad partnerships that individual businesses may compete for market share, but, but collaboratively, we as a company in Dell Technologies are able to partner and pursue market share opportunities in a wide landscape of the industry and really pursuing that, that, that as, as Gartner and IDC report, $1.7 trillion of potential spend out there in IT and uh, we're excited to go after it. Makes your eyes light up, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. So as we talk digital transformation, a lot of talk about digital transformation, about not doing, we had chat on earlier, about not doing the things that don't add value. Leave that to the experts, which brings us to Converged. Can you give us a high level overview of Converged CI versus Hyper HCI, Hyper yeah, Converged absolutely. Infrastructure? So uh, Converged infrastructure has been around for quite some time, and you think about in the early days, um, when you would buy components and you would stitch those components together to provide a, a, a function, an operational outcome for your business and the applications that you're running if you're operating from a customer perspective. Well there was a lot of complexity, and still is today, in integrating an array to a compute platform optimized for virtualization with networking and sand fabrics, uh, transporting those communications in a reliable, scalable form. CI was a mechanism to abstract the complexity associated with that integration and provide an ongoing operational life cycle experience in limiting the complexity of managing that outcome. So CI is about uh, productizing the integrations of components that are built by different engineering teams. HCI is really a lot of software development standardized on a Dell compute platform where engineering teams are engineering and codifying the integration on the outset. Instead of building individual components and stitching them together, we're building a product that's designed to function and operate in one way. In the CI space, we used to try, try, try to convince customers ruthless standardization. The more standardization you have, the more repeatability, the lower cost of ownership. Uh, we, use a, uh, we use a number uh, for a ratio of spend. Average IT shop spends about 70% of their ongoing IT budget keeping the lights on. 20% on new software acquisitions. 10% on equipment. I get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. We could give the equipment away and it wouldn't have an impact on the budget. If we can transform the way that you operate the, the infrastructure and materially impact that 70% side of the ledger, you, you get to transform the way the, the business operates and make uh, IT agile for you. So CI gets us on that journey, HCI builds it in. They coexist, it's not one versus the other, they operate in partnership to uh, operate the workloads that are necessary for your environment. 
Some applications need the data services of a storage array. Some uh, applications need uh, the, the simple ease, uh, cookie cutter nature of building virtual machines in a very simplistic uh, manner and scaling out the architecture in point and click operations. So let's talk about integration between the two. Am I, is there a use case where a customer would have both CI and HCI within a, their same data center? Absolutely, it's happening today. So, uh, and talk data center footprint and then you talk edge. So in the data center footprint, there are applications out there, your, your cash register applications, the applications that run the economy of the business. They require data services that are resident in decades of innovation at EMC and building uh, capabilities to ensure consistent ongoing operation data protection the Oracle apps, the, uh, the large you know, red letter business apps that you run in your environment, a lot of them gravitate to needing the features of a storage array. There are applications that you have in your data center that are homegrown to run in a, an encapsulated virtual machine. HCI is converged infrastructure uh, packaged in software and hardware combination, optimized uh, from the born in virtualization, and so being able to build virtual machines very easily and scale that infrastructure out um, are things that customers also need. So utilizing those two infrastructure strategies to support all applications in your, in your data center is vital to, I think, any infrastructure strategy. So let's talk about the edge a little bit. One of the, I think, big concerns of CIOs, CTOs, is data growth at the edge as we bring in IoT, big data, how does HCI, CI relate to those challenges? So in our HCI products, we embed uh, cloud storage uh, native to it. So you can actually pick your cloud provider and we'll replicate uh, data sets to that environment for really uh, uh, data protection, data recovery. Uh, there are also methodologies in our architecture where you may want to centralize uh, some of that replicated information in a central sense. So if an edge location goes offline, you can very easily uh, replace uh, that piece of infrastructure and replicate it back and get it up and running. You can still do that in the CI uh, landscape as well. We have those architectures. We've been selling edge CR solutions for a long time. We find that in a more traditional manufacturing plant where they have again an application that may require a bare metal operating system, not maybe 100% virtualized, needs features, uh, the data services of a storage array, that's where at the edge we would deploy a CI platform. But I would say it's more like 99% of the time, HCI, 1% of the time you find a CI requirement. Really depends on the customization required uh, by the app and the data services needed by the app uh, in that deployment at the edge. So let's talk about value to the organization. Where is the value in HCI? Is it only in the cost savings associated with the engineering? What about operations? Oh my gosh, so from an operations perspective, imagine buying a product that's designed to function software and hardware from the ground up in every aspect of how it's engineered. There are uh, operations uh, tools that we put inside of the product to manage how it works on the day, to report its health status uh, back to operators. Uh, performing software updates are literally a point and click operation. A lot of times in infrastructure conversations, we talk about point and click upgrades. In a, in a large data center, there's a lot of dependencies in upgrading software because you have different products. Uh, in an HCI platform, the, the software is, is literally all packaged and bundled together and just tr tremendously simplifies the, the act of up forming updates. And one of the problems that we find in, in environments is candidly good hygiene related to keeping your infrastructure updated to not the bleeding edge code releases, but the latest and greatest, uh, most secure software updates to uh, navigate yourself around all the vulnerabilities that uh, inevitably you know, uh, good-minded security professionals find out there. We want to keep make sure that we keep those systems uh, updated with the most current uh, firmware and operating environments, and HCI platforms engineer all that integration in the software, makes it a heck of a lot easier. You know, how do you, uh, we've talked about a lot of choices, right, a lot of options, uh, different kinds of migration paths. I mean, 
how do you help me get there at the end of the day? I mean, how, boil it down to maybe what is that basic question that you ask the end user about what their functions are and what, they, what their priorities are to help me decide what to do? Yeah, so I, I would start at a very high level uh, with any customer. And, and that would be more around their strategy of helping formulate their strategy for infrastructure acquisition. And that's asking them, how much, what are your applications like? How well do you know uh, your environment and your employees? There's a lot, I used to be an IT professional, um, actually in a customer environment, and I used to love to tinker with stuff. And a lot of times I would go out and I would put, uh, I would leverage my boss to acquire technologies just so I could tinker. And a lot of technology professionals love to have that latest and greatest technology, but they deal with some of the obstacles that you encounter with being on the bleeding edge. So I think, one, I would understand what are the skill sets of my organization, what are the priorities of my organization, what are the applications I need to run to support my business. And so when I found that, there are some environments that have custom applications that required a simpler uh, procurement experience, a, a simpler uh, a prescription on how best to integrate. In our portfolio at Dell EMC, in the Converge Platform and Solutions Division, we have a ready portfolio that's designed for build outcomes. So those organizations that want to accelerate the procurement of things that are going to work together, we sell build, uh, build, build outcomes in our ready portfolio. Then, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have uh, architectures that are designed for buy outcomes. Literally the integration is packaged and the value proposition is to simplify ongoing uh, operations through life cycle uh, assurances, uh, release uh, code management, ongoing uh, validation that integrations are going to uh, successfully operate. Now we have array-based integrations and hyper-converged based integrations in both ends of those spectrums. So the first thing is, where do you fall? Are you a build customer? or you buy a customer. When you find yourself into that spectrum, now let's talk about, do the applications require arrays? Or do the applications lean themselves to be more virtualized, more encapsulated, uh, capable of supporting scale out um, deployments uh, that lend themselves to more hyper-converged environments? What we'll find a lot of times is organizations have requirements for both. It's trying to figure out what percentage of spend what percentage of infrastructure you want to allocate in both of those use cases, and um, what the skill sets of your organization are to be able to hand go, handle the ongoing operations. There's a lot of good IT staffs out there that can handle the ongoing management of infrastructure. Build outcomes are great for those. There's a lot of IT organizations that are scrapped for resources and capability. They, they, they want their nights and weekends back. Right. Buy outcomes are great for them. So that's where I would start. Gotcha. Well, uh, before we let you go, I want to just make sure everybody at home understands, they're not giving it away. They're not giving <laughs> the equipment away. It's not really going to happen. That was purely a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> right? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, just yeah. not going to happen. It's funny, when he said that, Michael Dell strolled up to yeah, the I'm <laughs> agree. That's right. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having uh, me. Appreciate the time, and best of luck the rest of the week. Thank you guys, have a great show. Trey, you bet, thank you. We continue with our coverage here, Dell EMC World 2017, live from Las Vegas. More coming up right here on theCUBE. Cool, thank you.